I'm Sophie Hoskins and I was a teacher at Tarawera High School for four years before leaving to become a mum um, and I was involved in organising our camps. I'm Matt Melvin, I've been teaching at Tarawera High School since the start of 2013, uh, started at the same time as Soph um, and my current role is Senior Manager and um, that involves uh, looking after overseeing um, the development of student leadership in school. Been um, associated with school camps since I think about 2015. Uh, I've been a regular feature on the year nine camps and uh, the leadership camps, um, both of which occur in the first the start of the year within the first few weeks of each of each teaching year. Um, and uh, I've also helped out um, with the organisation of the uh, uh, Year 10 camp at various times, uh, though I haven't actually been on the Year 10 camp, and I have supported the Year 7s when they do their um, out-of-school out um, camp as well, and that's at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, and that's basically what we had, eh? It was Year 7, Year 9, Year 10, and the Year 13 leadership. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I was involved since 2013. Um, so we're just going to tell a little bit of a story of Tarawera's uh, journey with the camps, uh, which started back in 2013 when Tarawera High School opened. We've been really lucky to work with POET, the Perry Outdoor Education Trust, um, and they've been really supportive financially and professionally um, in helping us develop camps, running um, PLD for our staff, and I guess the whole idea behind it is to get as many uh, staff kind of um, competencies built up so we can use our staff to run the camps, um, which helps keep the cost down for students um, rather than paying external providers for this. And we had our first camp at the end of 2013, and that was a year 12 and 13 um, combined leadership camp. Um, and that was based um, in the school mid -eye because we had really bad weather and uh, almost had to um, cancel all our plans. And yeah, so we had our first year nine camp at the start of 2014. Um, and we just worked on that one. And then at the end of the year, moved into a year 10 camp. Um, and from there, the following year, 2015, we had three camps. And 2016, we brought in the year seven camp and that um, they were all kind of run quite locally. And I guess the goal was to uh, keep it local, involve as many staff as possible, get the staff running the activities and make the camps, I guess where we'd like to head in the future is to make the camps as sustainable as possible. So the people running those camps uh, can continue to do it or pass the reins over to someone else who can continue to do it and have enough staff um, competency so the wheels don't fall off the bus. Do you want to add anything in there, Matt? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess I was one of those staff who came on after you, you know, established the camp, the, the, the structure uh, around camps and um, I've, I guess I've taken on some of those uh, skills, learnings, and procedures um, to carry for carry them forward. Uh, say, say after you've left, um, and at the same time um, work with um, new staff who have been coming on camps and pass on what you've set up. So um, all the while, all along that that sort of that chronological pathway, we're sort of um, adding new needs with with. We've looked at um, how on our camps we can better represent the school values like mana, omnakitanga, ako, nakopono, and afina. Those are the um, the values that we we live and breathe at, at school. And um, alongside the core competencies, you know, care, managing self, care for others, and we we, we want to, we look at how our camps can reflect that. Um, uh, in particular, um, students, um, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking about Year Nine. That's the, um, the the junior camp I've had most to do with. 
looking at how students can relate to each other with um, with Manaki Tanga, um, with Nako Pono, our, our school values. Um, the activities that they are involved in, we go to Okotaina. Um, those activities include um, uh, taking kids out of their comfort zones. I'm thinking of the Burma Trail. I'm thinking of um, the, there's a, a bush walk that one of, that that we take the kids on and give them um, some insight into uh, flora and fauna. Um, and do you, what do you think about the benefits um, in terms of having our staff running those activities? Um, oh yeah. Randoms? Well. Um, at our school, you, you, the relationships, and you'll, not, you'll equate with this, relationships are what, draw, what drive success with our students, and, and success um, of, uh, in terms of, of, of tuition, of, of all the pedagogies we use at school. Everything de derives around the, those relationships. And um, we take, we ha if we have those, we've got those relationships with students, we take them on camp, and those relationships come with us. If you don't know our students, and you don't have time to, develop those relationships, um, the, the experience on camp um, can, can reflect that. The students, by the time they get to know you, the camp's over. Mm. Um, by the time um, you have that breakthrough, that epiphany with, with, with a, you know, a group of students who, who are a little bit reticent, by the time you actually get to the point where you really can make some progress with them, the camp's over. But if you are a, um, a teacher, Who's, who knows those students, has those relationships, well then your journey with them through um, the three, you know, the two night, three day camp um, reflects that. And we, 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 we've had a lot more success with um, teachers coming on board who already had 12 months with those students, getting to know them rather than being you know, a new teacher in school and coming on camp at the start of the year. So, you know, you can see it. Yeah. Um, and I, think and I think it's really important. Yeah, the kids really get to see um, another side of the teachers on camp too, eh? And it just strengthens those relationships when you get back to school. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing is that for for, for the students in our community, getting out getting out of out of Kawaro is is quite important. And when we take the kids out of Kawaro um, and experience some of the things that they do for the and for many of them, it's the first time they've done it, whether it be um, um, uh, the Burma Trail, or whether it be um, cooking, uh, cooking for themselves, living, in, you know, with the the, the, um, the little cookers and things like that. You know, we do it with them, and um, they 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 get a buzz out of it. Mm. Uh, they don't. Have, I don't think they get would get the same buzz if they did it with someone they didn't know. Mm. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, shared experiences. You can't under you can't undervalue that. Yeah. yeah, and then on, in terms of trying to use, um, yes, we get out of Kawaro, but we still try and keep it fairly local in terms of Okataina, Ohope, Rotorua. Um, so we're not really, you know, we're less than an hour away from Kawaro. Oh yeah, in, the, in, in terms of yeah, in terms of the uh, in terms of the la the cultural landscape, and I and I use cultural landscape with on purpose because. Yeah, we get out of Kawaro, but a lot of our kids, as well as as well as um, being too fully tall and too hoi and Natiawa, you know, that, that that's an area that 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 rohi, that area is quite wide, um, and so that covers places um, as far away as um, uh, Lake Tarawera itself, Okataina, Rotorua, um, Matata. Um, uh, Ohiwa, our kids, they, they have connections to those areas. So while we're getting out of Kawaro, we're still remaining local. If we were to take them to somewhere totally different where they had no, no cultural connection, well, that would be, that, that, would, that could in some instances be quite a, a challenge to them. Mm. But by taking them to places where they, they have a, a certain sense of familiarity with, I think it's actually really beneficial because then it's easier for them to do some yeah. of these things for the first time. And what do you think, if we look further ahead now, what do you think the vision is um, or the future of the camps at Tarawera High School? What would you like to see, um, especially with the leadership camp, because that's the one you're most... Yeah, well, the, yeah, um, the leadership camp, um, yeah, where, where, we wanted to, where we were wanting to take leadership in the school was a, 
a distributed model. And that is, um, you know, for the first few years of the school, we, we ran a very traditional model. Your, your head prefects are year 13. Uh, we do have some junior prefects um, and they have drawn from the junior school, year seven to 10. Um, but there's often a bit of a gulf between being a, a junior prefect at year 10 and then being a senior prefect at year 13. And um, we don't have, we, well, we're, we're a sporty school in some respects, but we don't have a really strong first 15. We don't have um, some of those sporting um, opportunities that provide leadership opportunities for kids at year 11 and 12. So what we're, what we're looking to do and what we're introducing into the school in line with our Tua Kanatana program is um, students who want to be leaders, giving them opportuni opportunities and encouraging them um, uh, at years 11 and 12. And even at year 10, really giving the year 10s a little bit more um, opportunity as, uh, in terms of, of leadership. So that by the time they get to year 13, they actually already have, they already have the quality a taste of the qualities and characteristics that, that make really good student leaders. And um, they're really able to excel. Whereas at the moment, some of them, sometimes we, we cram quite a bit into the year 13 year as a prefect. And we're sort of trying to upskill them and expect them to perform as full blown prefects at the same time. And sometimes I think, and it's anecdotal, but sometimes I think that leads some of our, our student leaders to struggle a little bit. But by, de by develop, by by developing leadership a little bit further down, I think we're actually going to enrich their opportunities and um, give them, uh, uh, equip them better for um, for that year. Now, in the last leadership camp, we brought year, year 12 students along, uh, just a, a handful of two or three year 12 students um, to get a taste, to find out a little bit about um, what leadership's all about, and it worked really well. And it, it was also, um, I mean, it, it was also the year where we had the poorest response from our year 13s to come on leadership camp. Mm -hmm. They, th there was a, a real, with that particular cohort, there was quite a, a uh, well, they just weren't, a lot of them weren't really interested, and it was, um, it was a little bit disappointing. But what it, it what it did is it, it forced us to look back at, at, at not what we're doing, why we're doing it, mm. and how we're doing it, yeah. and um, looking to grow some opportunities moving into the following year. And so for 2019, um, rather than trying to expect all our year 13s to come on camp, we want to spend a bit of time with like this year's year 12s in term four to identify those year 12s who want to come on a leadership camp. Mm. Do a similar thing with this year's year 11, so yep. we can identify some of next year's year 12s who might want to become uh, leaders and come on the leadership camp, and possibly even um, uh, work with uh, year um, some some of next year's year 11s and, and get one or two of them to come on camp. So there's there's almost a tour kind of yeah. opportunity within, yeah. Very exciting. The you know the things that worked really well with the, um, the the amazing race. And these are all things that you set up. The, it was the amazing race. It was my kitchen rules. Um, then we, we had a new activity this year that our guidance council introduced where the students were given four social issues to talk about in groups. Mm -hmm. And the teachers and parents who were there weren't allowed to say anything. And it was, and it was actually really interesting. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we feel that we are at a point where we could, um, and of course there was the, um, the activity-based learning ABL games. Um, uh, one thing we want to focus on is uh, developing leadership um, that they can apply to equally to peer support at school and supporting the year nine and 10 camps. In the past, we've, re we've equipped them really well for nine and 10 camps but um, not so much for peer support. So, because yeah. you'd think that they both are one and the same, but that doesn't always work out that way. So we're looking to, to, to take a more generic approach with those ABL games and how they can be applied to, um, to either peer support or year nine or year 10 camp. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other thing we, we, we noticed is that the gap between leadership camp and then those year nine and 10 camps is 
can, can be you know up to a month and we've got to keep the ball rolling with the students and their enthusiasm and knowledge um, of the ABL uh, system so yeah. that's something we're looking at um, fine-tuning next year yeah that's probably one thing we didn't make clear is that our year 12 and 13 students are used to run the year 9 and 10 camps alongside the staff and they're a huge yeah. part of these camps and we definitely would not be able to offer the same program without them and their help and um oh no I'll, I'll tell you what with the year the, all the reports i've had for the, this year and in previous years from year 10 camp that, that i've been on is that the the leaders were awesome they were the student like you say the student leaders couldn't run it yeah. um well we couldn't run it without the the input and have the enjoy the levels of success mm. and the same with year nine um they were um you know the, the pivotal and it's that that opportunity yeah that opportunity that we give them to actually flex to flex their leadership muscles and um their relationship um networks a, a, in that context it's, it's really quite it's quite rewarding mm. yeah so i guess that's a bit of a a story of the the camps at Tarawera High School and um, everything's always changing and growing and um, I think there's something if I can add something else yeah. um, these the the camps set the tone so very much and, and for year nine and year ten and leadership they set the tone they set the tone for the year uh, and in particular with nine and t uh, nine and ten they they um, it's the tone uh between how students relate with each other and how they re relate with their teachers yeah. and um without it it would it would um make i think it would make the experience in those years a little bit less rewarding for the students so it's, it, it really does does um and on a, a good camp that the gelling between the teachers and the students is really important but we can't forget the role that the um, year 12 and 13 leaders have because it also sets the, the, the tone of their relationship with mm -hmm. those students through the rest of the year. Mm. And um, we're actually seeing some of it this year, like, you know, when some of the prefects are needing support with Celebrate Success, another school-based activity, and they've drawn on some of those year 10 students that they had a really good relationship with on camp. Well, that, if we if we took those experiences away from school, it would make our the tour container relationships with the, within the school harder to to set up and maintain. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And I think again, we're just super lucky to have poet um, involved. Oh, absolutely, and the, uh, reducing the cost and also the knowledge. Mm. You know, you've got uh, we deal with uh, Donald. Donald Matheson and his his, his knowledge is uh, is outstanding in terms of ABL games, in terms of policies and procedures, in terms of reflection and um, and just the day to day management of some of these camps, you know. And um, you know, I take my hat off to him. And in particular, um, with this year's leadership camp, um, he did a, a really good job of. Um, uh, making sure that the ABL um, games worked, mm. and that they, and that the reason for them being there in the first place was made really clear to the students. Yeah, and we still use them. The kids, the the uh, the, the the leaders, when we are doing something with a group of kids, I go, okay, let's do some do some icebreakers you know, from camp. Oh yeah, and yeah, they're into it. Yeah, you know? and so it's and and, and he had it in, in this year's camp. He had a key part to play with that, and it was awesome. Yeah, that's great. Because that really does set them up for, yeah, the rest of the year and the, those two kind of roles.